the Lamborghini 350 GT. Back in 1964, the first sports car branded with the Bull logo came onto the market. Its mission, to run rings around Ferrari's horse. Our classic car expert Gustav Bauer says the legend surrounding the birth of the Lamborghini 350 GT is one of the most famous anecdotes in automotive history. Ferruccio Lamborghini owned a profitable tractor factory and a Ferrari 250 GT. But he wasn't really happy with the car and told Enzo Ferrari why right to his face. Ferrari retorted that Lamborghini should stick to making tractors. Lamborghini was so angry that he founded his own company. Automobili Lamborghini and introduced his own supercar, the 350 GT. The new company was based in Santa Gata Bolognese in Italy's Emilia Romagna region, barely 20 kilometers away from Ferrari's headquarters at Maranello. And that's where the ambitious Ferruccio Lamborghini poached his top managers. Christoph says there's a world of distance between tractors and supercars, but Ferruccio Lamborghini was very lucky that, at the time, Ferrari's development department was in a dispute with their boss. So Lamborghini was able to hire away three of Ferrari's best technicians. They developed the 350 GT and left Ferrari eating their dust. The media sang the 350 GT's praises, calling it the best, most refined supercar ever a real slap in the face for Enzo Ferrari. In 1964, just two years after the founding of Automobili Lamborghini, the 350 GT made its debut at the Geneva Motor Show. Que bella machina. Que bella machina, Christophe gushes. He's blinded by its beauty. The instruments, the leather upholstery, everything's of the finest quality. But it's the car's profile that impresses him most. It's elongated front and the filigree roof. He tells us it is built using the legendary Superleggera construction method, which employs a lightweight aluminum body and a space frame to ensure stability, the perfect ingredients for a supercar. In spite of the powerful 12-cylinder engine under the hood, the Lamborghini weighs in at under 1,200 kilos, less than a current model VW Golf. Inside the Lamborghini, more is more. There are more instruments, more switches, more displays. Yet the result is still ergonomic. Drivers enjoy all the comforts without sacrificing performance. The quiet 12-cylinder engine is a real feast for the eyes and was state-of-the-art at the time. Ferruccio Lamborghini owned almost every supercar produced in the 1950s and 60s, but he felt these domesticated race cars lacked creature comforts and their engines didn't run smoothly enough. He was determined that the first Lamborghini would change all that. Christoph says the 350 GT is easy to handle and has a very broad power band. When taking curves fast, he says, it first shifts slightly over the front wheels and then gently swings out at the back. While the Ferraris at the time still used rigid axles, the Lamborghini had independent suspension and coil springs on every wheel. But so much high-tech had its price. Back in 1967, the 350 GT sold for the equivalent of 30,000 euros, enough to buy three Porsche 911 Ts. But then, 12 cylinders never come cheap. Other than their V12 engines, the Mura, Contash, and other later model Lamborghinis didn't have much in common with the 350 GT. It was the one Lamborghini that managed to be both a devilishly fast supercar and an elegant Gran Turismo. Christoph says the 350 GT isn't as flashy as Lamborghini's later, more spectacular models, and it wasn't a big seller either. Just 141 of them changed hands between 1964 and 1967. Still, the 350 GT established Lamborghini as supercar maker and was unrivaled in its time. 
Today, a 350 GT in good condition will set you back at least 220,000 euros, around the same price you'd pay for a Ferrari from the same era.